Okay, friends, this is day 10 at our look at Matthew. And today we're gonna to talk about one more location. So we talked about the Jordan River, we talked about the, uh, the Judean wilderness, and today we're gonna to talk about what is one of my favorite spots. So we're gonna be in the back half of Matthew chapter four. So let's start in verse 12. Now, when he heard that John had been arrested, so here John is arrested, we actually get to the story of uh, John's arrest later on. So we'll deal with that when we get to it. But when he was arrested, Jesus withdrew to Galilee. What's Galilee? We hear a lot about it. You hear about the Sea of Galilee, all these things, but what is Galilee? Well, here, here it is on a map. You can see that it's north of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is kind of the, the, the cultural center and certainly at least the religious center of the Jews uh, at the time. But then you've got this region up here, Galilee. And Galilee is very, very distinct from Judea, which is centered in, uh, in, in Jerusalem. It's, it's very distinct at the time. One, you can see how it's distinct geographically. It's separated even further than it looks because you've got Samaria in the middle, and typically they would walk around Samaria, so it takes even further to travel between the two places. Culturally, they're very, very different. Galilee is an uh, area that is rich in natural resources. Uh, rich, the soil is rich, and uh, there's fishing in the Sea of Galilee. At the time of Jesus, it was a, a prosperous area. They both spoke Aramaic, but they had different kind of accents, and typically um, ja, the, the people who lived in, in Galilee would be kind of the butt of the jokes of people who lived in, uh, in Jerusalem. And though they're both Jews, the Judaism that is practiced in Galilee is by and large far more relaxed, okay? So you look at all these things, and sure, they're one people, but they're really different in a lot of ways also. They're even ruled by different sons of Herod at this time. So even politically, they're divided at this time. I mean, it would be like, yeah, we're all Americans, but New York and Dallas are very, very different. So they're, they're, they're two very different regions. This is going to play out in important ways all throughout um, the book of Matthew. There's one more thing about Galilee. Galilee is beautiful. I mean, I'll tell you, when we went to Israel, I was not ready for how beautiful Galilee is. Here, here's, here's a picture out over the Sea of Galilee. I'm talking about just stunning. So Jesus goes back up to Galilee and leaving Nazareth. So Nazareth is where he grew up, and that was in Galilee. He went and lived in Capernaum by the sea. So that picture that I showed you a minute ago is taken not far from Capernaum. It sits on the northern side of the Sea of Galilee. And uh, the synagogue that was there at the time of Jesus, the foundation of that synagogue is still there. Here's a picture of me touching that foundation. Now another synagogue is built on top of it now, but we know the very spot, the very location, it's the same foundation of the home synagogue of Jesus when he was an adult. A synagogue that, that he, he himself uh, attended and that he himself taught in. When you think about him going into Galilee, there are a lot of different reasons why he might have chosen to do that. But part of it, and this is all I want to cover today, is the symbolism here. The symbolism of what is happening when he gets into Galilee. Remember, he starts this ministry, his, his baptism and then his temptation in the wilderness. He starts it in, in the wilderness, in this dry, arid region. And this dry, arid region is, is right next to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem itself has many of the same kind of characteristics of the Judean wilderness. So much of what Jesus does is symbolic. And I think that part of what is happening here is that Jesus, as we will see later, is pointing towards the reality that the religious institutions, the, the, the way in which like the, the, a life with God is being practiced is, is dried up. It's stale, and you've got the Jordan River that cuts through there, and of course that's where John is. So there's like hope in the midst of this, and there, there is some relief, and John is calling people to a richer um, life with God, a richer faith. But all of this begins in this dry, hot desert. 
But now where does Jesus go? But he goes to Galilee. This beautiful, this, 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 this area that, that, that is just alive. And this is where he starts this little following of people that he'll gather around him. In fact, you skip down a little bit and you see him calling his first disciples. He was walking by the Sea of Galilee when he saw two brothers, Simon, who's called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and they followed. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And immediately they left their boat and their father, and they followed him. And then in verse 23, he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogue and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people so that his fame spread. So he goes to Galilee. He begins calling people around him. And as he goes about traveling and healing people, a crowd gathers around him. We'll talk about the significance of this crowd next week. But this crowd gathers around him. Here's what I think is happening here. Jesus knows that hard times are coming. He's going to end up back in Jerusalem. When he ends up back in Jerusalem, things are not going to go well. He knows that that time is coming. But this is a time of preparation. This is a time where he's going to be gathering people around him and, and allowing them and helping them to grow in their faith, in their walk with God, in their knowledge and understanding of who God is in a new and a rich way. It's a time of much fruitfulness. It's a time of preparation for what's to come. It's kind of, for me at least, kind of like today. I don't know what the temperature is out here, but it's got to be like right at 72 degrees. It's a nice little breeze. The sun's out. I'm recording this on Monday. You're getting it on Friday. And Mondays are like a great day for me. It's a day that I'm not in the office much. I don't take many meetings. It's a day when I'm studying and getting ahead for the sermon for the next week when I do things like this. It's a day, you can probably see little, little Lucy back there. Ah, oh, she just moved her head just as I pointed to her. Oh, yeah, Lucy right there. I spend time with the, with the dogs and then in the afternoon get to spend time you know, with Amy and the kids. And it's just, it's a, it's a day um, filled with a lot of fruit and typically a lot of joy. And it's a day when I'm preparing and this season of Jesus' ministry is kind of that. And this season lasts for a long time. It's a time when he's gathering people around him. And you imagine there being a lot of laughter. There's a lot of joy. And there's a lot of growth. And there's a motorcycle driving down my street right now. <laughs> you know, and, and, and during Jesus' time in, in, in Galilee, um, you know, a lot of times we talk about, like, in good times, waiting for the other foot to fall. What a, what a pessimistic way to look at things. I don't think that it's that. I think that what it is is that it's his time in Galilee. It's not that inevitably things will get bad. It's that it's a time of preparation. It's a time of preparation because he knows that at some point he'll be back in Jerusalem and things won't go well. But he's preparing the people. He's pouring into them and he's nurturing them and he's growing them. So they'll be ready when that day in Jerusalem comes. So no matter what season you're in, I hope that you're looking for how it is that God is seeking to strengthen you and grow you. I hope that many of you are finding yourselves in a season like today is for me, like this little piece of, of my life, like today. What today is for me. And it's a time of growth. And it's, a, it's a time of, of, of joy, a time where, 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 um, where fruit is being grown to prepare us for the journey. If you're in one of those seasons, take advantage of it. And know that God is preparing you for whatever comes next. And if you're not in that season, if you're in the wilderness, if you're where we were on Wednesday, we'll know that at some point Jesus will lead you to Galilee also for that kind of a season, a time of growth and preparation, a time of nourishment, a time where water is no longer scarce, but you're by the sea thriving. So friends, I think that's what's happening. When you look at the Jordan River that cuts through all of these things, and you see that there are seasons in the, in the wilderness and the desert. And there are seasons in Galilee. But throughout all of it, 
God is with us, and he's guiding us, and he's leading us. Next week we begin, oh, one of the parts of the Bible that I love just it's so much. Next week we're gonna get into the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus begins to teach us how best to live in this world. So do your reading, it's short for next week. And I'll see you then. God bless you, friends.